video we did recently with Matt and myself looking at setting up Project Huddle, I had kind of showed off this custom login page I had created and people had a few questions about it. So I thought I would take a few minutes to show you exactly what all I have going on. So after a few months of tweaking and testing, I've kind of settled on a system that allows me to get my development projects underway fast and provide a nice onboarding experience for my customers. This will use the combination of Cloudways for my hosting, Elementor, and Project Huddle. And I can have a new install set up and ready to go in just a few minutes. Plus, it all looks and functions really nice for my customers, which is a huge bonus. So let's take a look at how it's done. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is my starter site setup. So we won't go into all the details here, but if you're not familiar with what a starter site is, essentially it's just an installation of WordPress where you put in all your default plugins and everything you want to use. So when you start a new project, you can clone it and already have a lot of things in place. So I have a bunch of those things in place in this uh, Generate Press starter site, but there's a couple things in particular I wanna look at that will help you out in this video. So the first one being I have already installed the Project Huddle client plugin. And I like having this in my starter site so that when I clone this, it's already ready to go. I don't have to install it and connect it to get my project started with my client. So it's in here, uh, no settings have to be done. It's just in here and ready to go. The next thing is you can see here, I have Elementor in maintenance mode. And I do this so that when a when we set up the development site for the client, if anybody goes to the site, they just get hit with this login screen. They actually can't browse the site unless they're logged in. So it kind of hides it behind this coming soon screen. And this is what we're gonna talk about next, kind of how I built that. But I like to use that on all the development sites. It just keeps people who don't need to be involved with the project out of the project. So let's take a look at what I did for that. If we go here to Elementor templates saved templates. I have this pre-launch splash login. We're going to go ahead and open that up with Elementor. So this is the page that goes on all of my development sites that me and my customers are working on. I had some people ask if I rebrand this every time to make it personal to my customer's brand. My answer is that I don't. Uh, it would be fairly easy to do, but this still looks nice and custom, as in it's not the default WordPress login screen. Uh, but Customizing it for each customer would just be an extra step, and I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze in that part. So I've included, you know, obviously my brand colors, my logos, a little photo here. It looks like people are working on a website. They look happy. Great. But the key here is this little login form. So this is just an Elementor uh, login widget. Pretty much everything on here standard, except in the additional options, I have redirect after login and redirect after log out turned on, and then I'm just redirecting them to the home page By just using the relative URL, just the slash in there, this will work no matter what URL we're on, so I don't have to go change it every time. Now, the point of this is that when a customer comes to their development site, I'll usually set it, you know, customersname.ogleweb.com. When they come to their development site and log in, instead of going to like the typical wp-admin login where you get redirected to the back end of the website, this is gonna log them in and redirect them to the front of the website. I don't need them getting in the back end of the website while I'm developing it. Now, some customers, we might be doing some training on that after their website's launched, but during the development, I don't need them uh, messing around in the back end. It just adds confusion. So by using this login screen, I'm kind of killing a few birds with one stone. One, it hides the, the development site away from anybody who doesn't need to be there. Two, it looks nice and branded. They remember who they're working with. And then three, I think the login system like this and being able to be redirected to the front end of the website is a lot more efficient for my customers than having to send them to the back end and then tell them how to get back to the front end. So once I have that, uh, all set up in place one time. It's done forever. I never need to fiddle with it again. When I clone a new starter site, it's good to go. Now to set this in maintenance mode, you just go to Elementor. I think it's under tools. Yes. And then the maintenance mode tab and then the choose mode. I choose coming soon mode and then who can access people who are logged in and then choose the template. So this is the template I have built this pre-launch splash login. So once I hit save changes on that, if you're logged in, 
you can actually see the website, the front end of the website, whatever's, you know, there to the home page or whatever pages. I just have this set up for like basic typography stuff. Um, if you're logged in, you're able to access the site. But if you're not logged in, we'll go in a private window here. You just get the login screen. So that's the way I have all that set up inside of my starter site so that when I clone it, all that stuff is ready to go. So next, let's take a look at actually cloning my starter site and getting all that back end stuff set up uh, with Cloudways. This is super easy to do. So let's take a look. Okay, so now I am inside my Cloudways dashboard with all of my applications listed here. This is my Ogle starter for my Generate Press site. Uh, I have a couple of them. This one's for a contained layout. That's what I'll be using in this. Uh, so I've just labeled it as such. In order to clone this and get it started for a new project for a client, we'll just click the little menu here, clone it. We're gonna select the same server and hit continue. Now I will just pause this video for a second. It takes about a minute or two for this to get cloned and be ready for us to access it again. So I'll just pause this and come back once it's done. Okay, that took just a little under 90 seconds for that to clone and be ready to go. You can see here I've entered this application. You can see cloned Ogle Starter. Usually I'll just go back and rename this as the client's uh, company name. So we'll just call this for now client company, just so we have something to reference. So. We'll save that. And then I wanna go in here, uh, when you start a new project, a new application in Cloudways, they give you this really long Cloudways URL. That's unfriendly for my customers to remember. So I will just go in here and change this. And we'll do uh, comp our client name, we'll make everything match, clientcompany.ogleweb.com. And I'm gonna save that as the primary domain inside of Cloudways. After that updates, we'll go into Cloudflare and point the records to this new install. So I'm gonna copy this uh, IP address of the server. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do a new A record client company at that, save it. And luckily with Cloudflare, this will just take one second and then everything should be propagated and ready to go. So if we go here and visit this login screen now, All right, so clientcompany.ogleweb.com. It's got my splash page already ready to go. So everything is set up for me to start getting this project rolling for my customer. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is connect this new install to our dashboard in Project Huddle. So let's take a look at how we would do that. I have my dashboard already set up here. Uh, this is just my feedback dashboard. That's all I use it for. I'm gonna go in here to Project Huddle new website and we'll just call it uh, client company. Remember we're making everything match. I'm gonna grab this URL, copy that, paste it in here, next. It's a WordPress site. Uh, it remembers my login. We're gonna hit connect. It's verifying and project huddle should be ready to go now. Uh, I have all this stuff set up to my defaults how I want it, so there's nothing else I need to do right now here. We'll hop back over here to this client company. I'm going to log in, and we'll verify that Project Huddle is working. All right, so we're logged in. We can see the site. Project Huddle's little uh, welcome screen comes up, which is nice and branded. Uh, press OK. We'll make sure this is working. Add the new comment. Okay, everything seems to be working here. We'll delete this out of here. So the next step in my process would be to actually add my clients as a user on this site so they can log in and request their changes through Project Huddle. So we're still here on the clientcompany.ogleweb. I'm gonna go on the back end and we're gonna add some users here, or at least one, so we can test it out. So we'll go in here, add a new user. We'll just say client name. We'll use one of my other email addresses. We'll use a weak password just for this video. I'm not gonna send them an email about their account. I'll make them administrator. It's not gonna really matter because they're not gonna see the back end anyways, uh, but I want them to be an administrator once I launch their site so I don't have to go back and change this later. 
Once that's added, I'm going to go in here and edit their user account. And this is the important part for me, show toolbar when viewing site. So we're talking about the admin bar up here. I want to hide that away from them. So if I uncheck that, they will not see it anymore. We'll update this user. And let's go ahead and test everything to make sure it's working. I'm going to log out of that and I'm going to log out of my dashboard site. Once I do whatever kind of development work I need to do and get the site ready and then I'm ready for the client to take a look at it, I'll send them over the URL, which clientcompany.ogleweb in this case, and send them over their login information. So we'll go ahead and log in using the email address that I set up. <coughs> And when they log in, they'll get redirected to the front end of the website. So they'll see the new homepage I've designed for them. They'll get the little onboarding for Project Huddle. And they can hit OK. And now they can start leaving feedback on their site. Obviously, this is just a little demo page. But they could click on here, tell me to change the headline. If I could spell. Add that comment. Their name will pop up there. And we can start collaborating. So if you haven't used Project Huddle before, that's exactly how it works. Uh, you click the little plus button, click on something you want to um, make a comment about, and then leave your comment. It is very awesome. Um, so from there, they can leave all the comments they need. We can start collaborating directly inside of these comment threads, which is nice if we have to do some back and forth. Uh, there is a toolbar here that will show them all the comments on all the different pages. Obviously, right now, we just have this one but they can go in here and find everything that we've talked about. Of course, on the dashboard side of it, me as the administrator using Project Huddle, I can go in and see exact screenshots of what they saw when they left a comment. Sometimes that's a problem with their browser size or something. They're seeing it differently than I am, so that's a nice feature. Uh, but it's really handy for just breezing through all these request changes and making sure we're on the same page with everything. So. Definitely a neat little setup that I'm really happy with now that I've gotten all the kinks worked out and I can clone this site, add a user, and I'm off to the races. The, the custom login screen is nice because it brands everything to my company and it also keeps everybody out of the site who doesn't belong there. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to help you out.